St. George's is located on the treaty lands of many First Nations, including the Anishinaabe, Attawandaran, Haudenosaunee, and the Métis. We pray that we will respect those who went before us and that we may dwell on this land in friendship and peace. We sing of your glory, we praise you again, for you are eternal. Amen. for purity. We endure, we will also reign with him. 
If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself, a worker approved by God. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by God, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God, except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O giver of every good gift, may our hearts swell with gratitude this morning as we give just a pause and give thanks for your many blessings. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. There was a little boy who was overheard talking to himself as he strutted through the backyard wearing his baseball cap and toting a, a ball and a baseball bat. I'm the greatest hitter in the world, he announced. Then he tossed the ball into the air, swung at it, and missed. Strike one, he yelled. But undaunted, he picked up the ball and said again, I'm the greatest hitter in the world. He tossed the ball into the air. When it came down, he swung again and missed. Strike two, he cried. The boy then paused a moment to examine his bat and ball carefully. He spit on his hands and rubbed them together. He straightened his cap and said once more, I'm the greatest hitter in the world. And again, he tossed the ball up in the air and swung at it. He missed. Strike three. Wow, he exclaimed, I'm the greatest pitcher in the world. <laughs> it's all about perspective, isn't it? Thanksgiving is a good time for us to consider our outlook on life. This is a time where our country encourages us to remember the many and varied ways we are blessed. And this ought to be second nature for us as Christians because we give thanks each week when we worship together, most especially when we celebrate Eucharist, a word which literally means Thanksgiving. But the reality is that we sometimes forget to give thanks. Perhaps this is due to excessive busyness, or maybe we're going through such a dark time that it has become difficult for us to think of things we are grateful for. Or perhaps it is as simple as Aldous Huxley once said, most human beings have an absolute and infinite capacity for taking things for granted. Well, let's explore our gospel story today 
about the ten healed lepers to see if we can discern possible reasons for the nine to have forgotten to return to Jesus to give thanks. Now, firstly, we learn two things about the setting of the story. It occurs while Jesus is on the road to Jerusalem. And secondly, it takes place outside a village in an area between Galilee and Samaria. Now, firstly, why was Jesus headed to Jerusalem? What was to happen there? Luke, the storyteller, constantly reminds his readers that Jesus is on his way to suffer and die at the hands of the authorities in Jerusalem, and on the third day he would rise from the dead. The reminders of his destination functioned to keep readers on track. Jesus was on a mission. His teachings and miracles were always under the shadow of his own trial and tribulation and resurrection. Indeed, the displays of his healing power in this and other miracle stories are but foretastes of the restorative force streaming from the empty tomb. The geographical location of the story is also significant. The town is a place of diverse peoples who, under normal circumstances, would not be associated with each other. Jews and Samaritans, remember, in those days despised each other. But their common malady, their communal pain, brings them together. They are not unlike the alcoholics of AA brought together by their struggle with a common addiction. They are not unlike the members of a grief support group or a divorce recovery group brought together by their pain. They are the patients in hospice waiting for the day when their suffering will be over. They are the people of St. George's, a diverse community brought together by a common understanding of human frailty, the mutual need and appreciation for God's grace and love. Well, the suffering these ten lepers endured was not limited to their physical pain. Their disease required them to live outside the city gates to limit their contact with the healthy. They are cut off from family and friends. And what's more, they are cut off from their faith. Leprosy was seen as the physical manifestation of sin in those days, and it made one ceremonially unclean. And thus lepers were forced to live on the outskirts of society and were prevented from attending religious services. Now, in a way, I can empathize with why, or understand why only one leper out of ten stopped to give thanks and praise to God for healing a disease or chronic illness can all too often afflict the soul as well as the body. Someone who is in intense physical or emotional pain can have great difficulty believing in a God who is supposed to be both loving and all-powerful. It is easy to harbor resentment towards God for situations like this, with bitterness festering deep in the heart. And I wonder if the nine lepers felt maybe a little bit entitled to their healing. Maybe they felt they'd suffered long enough, and when their miracle finally came, they thought, it's about time. When we feel life has been unfair to us, it's easy to take the good things that do come for granted. Or maybe they were just genuinely caught up in the excitement of having received their miracle. Maybe they became too focused on the result that they forgot where the result came from. Maybe they were too focused on the gift that they neglected the gift giver. But whatever the reason, the nine who did not stop to thank Jesus and praise God may have been healed of their illness, but their hearts were not yet made whole. Ingratitude may be the deadliest of vices because it keeps us from being able to recognize God's presence in and around us each moment. When we are ungrateful, we cannot see our lives, our very existence, as gift. But when we practice gratitude, and please note, it is a practice, for it takes work. We are essentially choosing to put on what I like to call grace-colored glasses when we view the world. Let me explain. In school, one of the first things we learn is that we are all biased in some way. And it's best we acknowledge it. 
Our upbringing, personality, hurts, and triumphs will impact how we see the world. And we must recognize this truth in order to be more honest with ourselves and with each other. But as people of faith, we are biased in that we believe in a God who loves us and is redeeming the world. If this is true, then all around us should be signs of God's redeeming love. So we put on grace-colored glasses and make the choice to see our lives and the whole world from the perspective of God's loving activity. And when we do this, seemingly random events like having a good conversation with a family member, making a new friend, or enjoying a good meal, these things take on a new significance. These things don't just happen, but rather they are gifts to be thankful for, instances that God uses to lift us out of the dark moments of life. And when we intentionally give thanks for these gifts, their power to heal and transform us is amplified because we make the connection between our lives and God's life. And that's what happens for the one thankful leper. He is able to connect the physical healing he received to God's grace. And his faith-filled proclamation of praise brought him into a deeper relationship with Jesus. Life is filled with ups and downs. That goes for our personal lives and our lives together as a faith community. And we are continually confronted by the need to make key decisions. But we cannot make these decisions from a place of negativity or despair arising from ingratitude. We must take the time to discern God's blessings in our lives, that we may be filled with a greater sense of God's love, so that we may make free and even joyful decisions together. The coming months are important for this parish to discern a path forward. We may very easily recall the challenges and disappointments of our past and present, but it is essential we also take time to give thanks for the ways we have enjoyed God's presence in this church. Like the grateful leper, we can be fully aware of our need, but also be quick to respond to God's grace with praise and thanksgiving. So let's let gratitude be our attitude. Let's practice it by giving thanks always and at all times, in seasons of light and in seasons of darkness. Say a thank you to God in your heart and mind each time you perceive grace at work in your day. Give thanks before sharing a meal. Tell someone today you are thankful for their life and love. Make it your habit. And I'll close us with this prayer. Even though I clutch my blankets and groan when the alarm rings each morning, thank you, Lord, that I can hear. There are those who are deaf. Even though I keep my eyes tightly closed against the morning light as long as possible, thank you, Lord, that I can see. There are many who are blind. Even though I huddle in my bed and put off the physical effort of rising, thank you, Lord, that I have the strength to rise. There are many who are bedfast. And even though the first hour of my day is hectic, when socks are lost, toast is burned, tempers are short, thank you, Lord, for my family. There are many who are lonely. Even though our table never looks like the pictures in the magazines and the menu is at times unbalanced, thank you, Lord, for the food we have. There are many who are hungry. Even though the routine of my job is often monotonous, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to work. There are many who have no work. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Amen.
a spirit of gratitude. Let us affirm our faith together. We believe in God, who surrounds us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman's womb, servant of the poor. He was tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and life everlasting. Amen. And now we remember our faults and failings and bring them to God, thankful that God, our God, is a forgiving God. Holy God, maker of the skies above, lowly Christ, born amidst the growing earth, spirit of life, wind overflowing waters, in earth, in sea, in sky, you are there. O hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul behind all souls, in everything we touch, in everyone we meet, your presence is around us, and we give you thanks. But when we have not touched, but trampled your creation, when we have not met, but missed you in another, forgive us, and hear now our plea for mercy. God, who calls you by name, hears your every prayer, forgives your sins, and holds you in love. In the name of the Holy Three, your sins are forgiven. Live in peace and pray for me, a sinner. Amen. This is Thanksgiving weekend, and we all have so much to be thankful for. Thank you, Father, for having created us and giving us to each other in the human family. Thank you for being with us in all our joys and sorrows. You comfort us in our sadness and give us companionship when we are lonely. Thank you for yesterday and today and for the whole of our lives. Thank you for family, friends, health, and grace. May we live this and every day conscious of all that has been given to us. God, we seek your wisdom and strength so that we can adapt to the changes of each new season. As the days grow shorter and the nights longer, as the warm winds give way to cool, crisp breezes, as the leaves on the trees explode in bold colors, so will we give way to changes. Help us to adapt, to bend, and to be flexible so that we can continue to function at our best on the inside despite the changes going on outside of us. And as the darker days of winter loom near, let our hearts be filled with only love and light and warmth for all of us and each other. Father, lift up the leaders of all countries, both political and religious, that they may rule with wisdom and integrity. Please guide them in the ways of peace, justice, and truth especially thinking of Russia and the Ukraine. As greed and the war trample the, the world, and these people, and its people, there are seeds <coughs> of kindness and goodness. We pray for the people who prepare food in the soup kitchens, especially this Thanksgiving weekend. And we pray for the safety of lost children and those struggling with illness. We pray for those re trying to rebuild their lives after natural disasters, thinking of Florida, Puerto Rico, and especially our East Coast, in Nova Scotia, PEI, and Newfoundland. Lord, give us the faith to take the next step, even when we don't know what lies ahead. Give us the assurance that if we stumble and fall, you will pick us up and put us back on the path. And give us the confidence that even if we lose faith, you will never lose us. 
Amen. Now let's continue with the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.